A great way to decide what crops you will grow is to look at John Jevons model. In this segment, John leads us through his biointensive teaching farm so we can learn from his decades of experience. Here we will see how to divide your land, how to apply the principle of companion planting, and how to determine crop yields so that you grow enough of each crop for food and compost. No matter how much growing space you have available, the biointensive method recommends a basic formula for how to divide up your land. 60% for compost crops to replenish the soil as well as to provide some food, 30% for high calorie root crops to grow a large amount of food in the smallest area, and 10% for nutrition crops for the remaining protein, vitamins and minerals not found in the other crops. The biointensive method suggests you reserve 60% of available land for compost crops. And one of John's favorites is the cold weather fava bean plant. This fava bean is a legume, so they fix nitrogen in the soil. It will grow at 10 degrees Fahrenheit without dying. It grows ultimately six feet high, and it, besides producing a lot of biomass for compost, it can produce a lot of beans to eat. Fava beans benefit many other crops when they are companion planted an important principle of the biointensive method. Companion planting is basically a way to put plants together that have a stimulating or beneficial relationship and to keep plants apart that may have a negative or harmful impact on each other. What we're going to be looking at here is a combination of cereal rye and fava beans. This is interplanted because the fava beans are going to fix the nitrogen in the mm -hmm. soil mm -hmm. and grow a better crop. They also develop biomass for the compost pile. And the cereal rye. Cereal rye. Yeah, it's wonderful. What it does during the winter is it grows only about this high off of the soil all winter. Is that right? Yeah, so the wind and the rain and the snow, ah. they don't bother it. It doesn't push it over. But then during April and May, it grows seven to eight feet tall. And do you often use these two together, the cereal rye and the fava? Sometimes we use them together in time like this yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Other times we rotate them. Okay. So the fava is one season, ah. one winter, and then the cereal rye the next winter. But, the, but ultimately the soil receives the benefit from both of them. Absolutely. Is that right? Okay. And then the, another way in which this is a companion is the root system of the fava is fairly shallow. Yeah. Where it's deeper for the cereal rice, so they don't get in the way of each other. These don't compete. They, they complement each other. Exactly. Okay. Cereal rye is also a good companion plan for another compost crop, vetch. But you need to know when to harvest. This, this is a, a vetch. There's a number of different varieties, this purple uh, vetch, and I think in this case, most of it has purple flowers, mm -hmm. and it fixes nitrogen in the soil. So the point at which we harvest it is when it's flowering like this. It's at what we call like 50% flower, mm -hmm. and so we take it out at this point or even a little bit earlier would be better, because if we don't, if it goes much further, uh, it will cause the cereal rise to fall over. Okay, so we gotta make sure we catch it in time. Yeah. Fine timing. Yes. When you think of compost crops, you think of the biomass they create, as well as the food and nutrients they provide. But beyond what they do above the ground, the root structure they create below the ground provides a miraculous benefit. But what we can't see is even more important. That's what's under the ground. What's really uh, special is roots are one of three forms of compost, but you don't compost them in a compost pile. Mm -hmm. They have a special relationships with the soil and the microbes, so you don't know where the soil lets off, the roots begin, and both of them let off and the microbes begin. They're in a kind of a, a wonderful living cosmic dance. Many compost crops, like triticale, produce calories as well as biomass for compost. Ooh. So, John, what is this crop? This is almost as tall as the others we saw. Well, there's, there's a reason for that. This is a cross between wheat and cereal rye. 
This is a cross. Right. It, it took uh, years to develop. It's called triticale. Ah. It has really strong stems. So even though it doesn't grow low in winter, the wind and the rain and the snow don't tend to push it over mm -hmm. because it's so sturdy in its stem. So, John, I noticed this triticale is, is grown just alone without anything else. Mm -hmm. So why, why is that as opposed to what we saw with the, the uh, cereal rye? Well, we grow our winter crops two different ways. We interplant them like we saw previously where the legume and the grain are together. Mm -hmm. And we also, so that's known as like uh, companion planting in time mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we also grow them over time. So uh, this winter, this bed yeah. has a grain in it. Next winter, it will have a legume in it. Okay. So triticale as a part of the 60% crops is both a compost crop, but it also has a significant amount of calories. That's, that's right. In fact, um, the thing that the grains do is they're weight efficient. They have a lot of calories per pound. Mm -hmm. And you can get, at mid-range yields, you can get 17 loaves of bread out of this one 100 square foot area. 100 square feet, 17 loaves of bread. Now, what if I want more than 17 loaves of bread? Well, if you wanted, say, one one-pound loaf of bread for every week in the year, it would take three beds, 300 square feet. Okay. Well, I'm satisfied with this. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> It'll be even easier then. <laughs> right. Does it taste good? Oh, it's wonderful. In fact, if you bake bread with freshly uh, threshed wheat, for the first 30 days, it tastes even better. <laughs> and it tastes wonderful after that, but it's even better in the first 30 days. Another compost crop, barley, has the benefit of a very short growing period. So this is bearded barley. Right. And a few things I've learned from John here. Uh, we can see that this barley, it's called bearded barley because it has these spikes. And what's wonderful about that, this, this beard um, keeps the birds off, which is very helpful in, in growing the barley. So this bearded barley provides a significant amount of calories and it also may provide a tremendous amount of biomass for the compost. Um, another thing that we know about this is that it, there's a shorter growing time with this barley. So at best, best optimal conditions, we're talking two to three months, it's going to grow to maturity.